you've obviously been on your fair share of film sets, but making your first feature, was there anything that happened that made you think, oh, that's how they do it? <laughs> there were a few things. I remember one really embarrassing moment where I picked up the viewfinder and, uh, you know, it's, uh, for those who don't know, it's like the, it lets you see what the camera would see without actually having to pick up the whole camera. And so I'm kind of looking through it and uh, everyone's standing around the whole crew and I said, so are the black lines, is that the edge of frame? And I just saw all these blank looks and realised I just asked the dumbest question. So you kind of really learn it's like learning to swim by diving off Niagara Falls. Like, you just kind of get on the set and you have to play catch-up. But um, there were many moments like that where I embarrassed myself, basically. Now, this movie lets us see how Tucker and Specs met Elise, right? Yes, it does. Does it yeah. line up with the shorts that were on the uh, DVD? <laughs> Am know I know the what? only we're one who's watched that? Those, <laughs> we're pretending those shorts don't exist. It's like, well, I, I, I realized when I was writing Insidious 3 that I wanted to tell this story and I realised they had made these promotional shorts and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to ignore them. <laughs> like, there's a whole different story. So we'll say that's the alternate universe. That's the sliding doors version of how they met. Hi, Gwyneth Paltrow. Now how about this man that can't breathe? In terms of demon classification, is he more in line with the Fireface demon or the Bride in Black? Um, I would say he's more in line with the 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 fire-faced demon from the first film. He he, I wanted to keep him very mysterious. You know, he's this kind of silent creature that that really, to me, is the embodiment of cancer, to be specific, and and misery, to be more general. You know, all the misfortune that kind of visits us as humans throughout our lives, all the tragedies that kind of touch all of us, like whether it's a a relative or a loved one of ours getting cancer or an unfortunate accident, all this stuff, this demon, he embodies that. And I actually said to the special effects makeup team who was creating him, I said, imagine if cancer, the disease, was a person. What would he look like? And, and that's, so that's, that's the road we went down. So I think, he, I think he's kind of a darker, more... Um, there's something very um, kind of there's a he's, he's a kind of a black cloud. He's not a colorful demon at all, you know. What about the end of Insidious Two? Are we ever going to find out what Elise saw? It, is it the the red faced demon? Uh, I can't say. You know, I don't know. I hate to give the Chris Nolan answer on this one, but it's up to you. Yeah, and and a lot of people have been saying they're disappointed that they didn't find out what happened at the end of Two. But I say. Your disappointment will evaporate when you get a movie with a living, breathing Lynn Shay. She's such a great actress. She's playing Elise. If I had continued the, on from the end of part two, Lynn Shay, the Elise character, is dead. And we don't want ghost Lynn Shay. We want living Lynn Shay. So I reckon it's a good, good balance. That is totally fair. And now, obviously, James went on from the low budget horror movies to doing Fury Another Seven, indie film. and now, yeah, Fury <laughs> Seven, yeah. and now like Aquaman too. Is that kind of the track you'd be interested in as well? You know, I have no idea. I feel like I've come really late to the party. Like I just got here, so I need. I I, I always thought I'd direct one day. You know, in the back of my mind, I guess. I guess it's that old actor line, what I really want to do is direct, you know. I always felt like, well, one day I'll direct. And then when the opportunity came up, I, I didn't know that I would love it as much as I did. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a hard job and it's, it's stressful like everyone says it is, but I really enjoyed it. And so I think it's kind of a, a weird realisation for me that I would like to keep directing movies now. So it's hard to say where I, what I would do next. I don't know if I would do... Furious Seven so massive, I don't know if I could handle that stress. You know, I don't want to be Steve Jobs. I just want to manage an Apple store in, like, Orlando. That's what I can handle. You know, I don't want to, <laughs> to use a really bad metaphor for making movies.